Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today here at 143 Handmade. This is Liz. So this is my crazy S quilt. I have a whole playlist all about it. This is the should be the last video. I might do another quick short to like after I take it outside after I wash it. But um, this is the the last step and I've decided to hand finish the binding. I, I machine machine sewed it in the last video onto the back side and now I'm gonna roll it over to the front like so and you could totally take the time to um, pin it or use uh, clips or the iron or any of those things I am not I am just gonna do this by hand and so now that I've got that folded over very nicely, I'm going to go ahead and flip that up just a little bit so I can get my needle through the, the, um, the space there, the hem space, you know, through all of those layers. And I'm going to go ahead and, um, loop it around. Oops. There we go. And tie, basically tie a little knot. You know, I knotted the end of my thread, but I'm also going to loop around this loop a couple times. And really, that's just going to, you know, very securely anchor that. So, that is how I'm going to start and finish my, my bits here. And now I'm just going to come straight out from that. Let me see, get up close to the camera. So, here's, here's my stitch. And I want my uh, my big stitch to be pretty close to the edge, so I'm just going to put it straight out like so, and that will get my thread out to sorry um, the front of that. And you know I don't want to pull too tight, so it's bunching that. Don't want that. So we're gonna lay everything nice and flat and fold it over. And I'm keeping that spot pinched really nicely making sure the back looks white like I want and I am just going to do a basic running stitch this is a very long needle let's see it's yeah it's a two inch long needle it's very strong but it's also very sharp and it has a good size head I have no idea what kind of needle this is I don't, I don't know uh, most of my needles came from my mother my grandmother or uh, various aunts and in-laws that have passed away that sort of thing so I really don't get packaging <laughs> so I've loaded up um, several stitches here and I'm gonna go ahead and just pull that through and there we go and that is all I'm going to do all the way around all the way around this blanket and I can't tell you how much I appreciate every single one of you that has come along for my crazy quilt journey. Um, I will be doing more quilts next year. I'm going to keep up my, my sewing Sundays and um, maybe even incorporate a little bit more sewing into my videos. I'm not sure. It's just whatever whatever is, is fun at the time. I don't, you know, I'm not a quilter per se. I do enjoy sewing, but I don't quilt in the traditional manner, I guess you could say. And I don't want to tell you guys, oh, I'm going to do, you know, X, Y, Z and then not do it. So I'm going to tell you that um, I have lots and lots of quilts in my head that I want to make and several that I actually have the material to do. So there will be more quilts for sure. Okay, see I just hit a, um, a particularly thick spot in the crazy quilting. So I only took the one stitch because I could feel that that was going to be tough to pull on out. So feel free to take it one stitch at a time if that's what you need to do for any particular section. Um, I am not at all a master at this, but I did just... Um, this year I did hand quilts as a blanket for my son, the whole thing, and it was so much fun. Even though the frame that I had was a super old frame that had come from my grandmother, she had never even opened it and used it. She was not a quilter. Um, she sewed clothes. 
and as far as I know, she never, never made a quilt in her life, but, um, you know, somehow or another, she had a quilt frame, and it just, it was, it was so bad, and it literally fell apart on me part way through, and my son and my husband, thankfully, did some carpentry magic and made it work for me so I could finish the quilt out, but... As soon as that quilt was finished, we were so ready to just have it out of the house and because it was supposed to be like this foldable unit that I'd be able to like tuck behind the couch. It so was not. <laughs> so, um, you know, I can't wait to have my, my studio built. It's still just in the dreaming phase, but if I ever get a, get a studio built, then I will definitely be doing more hand quilting and we will be building a good quilt frame because while that one was um, a terrible one it did exactly what i wanted it to do in that i got to try hand quilting and i learned that i loved it and that's that's valuable you know to know that about yourself and not just wonder have that be one of those things that you just do i want to do it do i not want to do it i'm interested but eh, you know instead of being on the fence about it now i know hand quilting is definitely something i want to do and i want to find a way to do it um you know around my cats <laughs> and for now in this house that's just not really much of an option but um you know we, the house that we're in right now was always supposed to be a temporary solution um, out here on our property. And our dream has always been to build our own house. And so we're, our kids are grown now, they're all in their 20s. And, you know, we're at a place where we're, once we, once we catch up on those things that we got a little behind on, um, we, uh, started a business that did not succeed and there's you know some financial repercussions there once we get that handled we will be able to start developing our land in a way that we haven't before you know when the kids were young and so hopefully there is a new house and a studio and possibly even a library in there eventually <laughs> And so all I'm doing as I keep going along is I just use my fingers to really pull this out and I'm pressing that down and folding it over just a few inches at a time and because that's all I can hold that's all I can stitch is just a few inches at a time so there's no reason to worry about getting you know a whole bunch of it ready although if you were gonna um, take it to the iron just iron the whole thing <laughs> you know it'd be silly to to iron just a few inches and stitch it and then uh, you know keep going back and forth like that so thank you so much for joining me and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off here well no I should finish this string so I'm gonna finish this thread so that way I'll show you how I'm gonna tie it off but it's essentially just the same way that um, I started it so just gonna keep going here and because I'm just doing the running stitch it's not consuming a huge amount of floss you know a few huge amount of thread if that's a consideration because I know sometimes when you're first starting out with slow stitching if you if you don't have you know heaps of embroidery floss it's um, you know you do have to be concerned of, of you know do you do I have enough well with the straight running stitch it's it's just taking up a smidgen more than it does just laying it straight across you know so the length that I pulled out will it will do slightly less than that lengthwise and here we go and because this is a scrappy border I am coming up sorry about all those notifications on my phone there thought I turned it on silent but it is what it is, you know, and here we go. We're coming up. When I pull it tight, sometimes it bunches, and so I make sure to pull it, you know, stretch it back, back flat before I move on. 
So here we're coming up on this juncture here where it's the, the two different um, pieces of binding. And so we might have struggle a little bit to get our needle through. So I'm just going to do the one stitch, and pull it through. And there's a, kind of a big gap there. I'm going to go ahead and just go with that because your eyes really not going to notice that because of the transition of the fabric once it's, you know, just out on the on the chair. That's one of those little imperfections that, you know, when you're doing it, you notice how uneven your stitches are, you know, and, and you can see, oh, well, that stitch was way too big. That stitch was way too small, you know, and, and all of that kind of th stuff goes through your head. But the reality is, is that nine times out of 10, once it's where it's going to be used, you know, and you're going to be looking at those stitches from, you know, several feet away as opposed to, you know, while you're doing the stitching, looking at it from inches away, you know, depending on how good your eyesight is and your setup and all of that, <laughs> you know, I mean, you could be working at it as to, you know, about a foot away, but it's still, you know, measured, you would measure that distance in inches as opposed to measuring it in feet. So, and that's what I was getting at. But I love how this purple is, is showing on this. I don't know what my sister or my, my daughter's dog's upset about, but he'll be okay. And see, look how it looks on the back. I've got some little teeny tiny stitches, some bigger stitches. I'm not worried about them being even. I think that that looks great. So, okay, I'm just going to pretend as though I got to the end of this gloss. And so what I would do is just take the, take the thread to the inside and... Bring it over here to my hem space and just knot it. Tie a knot around the hem space. Like so. And then, you know, snip it off. And then to, you know, start, it would be just the same thing, only you know, I'm just not, I'm not going to bother to cut that, but I'm just going to come over here and come through this edge right here, making it kind of a small gap between those two stitches. I'm going to make sure everything's laying right again, because you opened it up, so you want to pull everything taut, and then just start. That extra knot is not going to hurt anything, you know, I'm not worried about it. I am, um, I'm not going to go scrappy with the, with the purple thread. You totally could. You could cut, um, you know, multiple lengths, shorter lengths of multiple color threads and add multiple color threads to your scrappy border here. And that would be a great way to use up some of your embroidery floss if you have some, you know, decent lengths, but not, you know, not huge amounts of a particular color or whatever. This would be a great way to use up those scraps as well. So I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys coming along this ride with me. Um, I have my 600 subscriber giveaway. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Going on right now. And um, you'll have to go check out that video to learn how to enter to win that giveaway. But whether you enter to win that giveaway or not, I just want to say a huge thank you to each and every one of you. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys taking that time to to hit that subscribe button. I know you don't have to, and, you know, YouTube's making it, you know, more and more confusing as to, to what's important. Do you, you know, subscribe to a channel to show support? Do you, do you sign up with a membership? Do you like their videos? Do you comment? You know, all of those things. YouTube's just, it's gotten a little, little confusing. But that subscribe button, it still counts, it still matters, all of those likes matter, all of the comments matter. It, it's all interaction, it's all community, and, and I appreciate every single bit of it. You know. Uh, so, thank you. I can't, I just, I can't say thank you enough. I, I feel silly saying thank you so many times in some respects, but like I can't think of a better word. I am just so grateful 
and I just want to make sure that you know I really put it out there just how much I appreciate you guys hitting that subscribe button so this is how my quilt will look when it's all finished that all the way around on the front and this is what it will look like on the back I'm gonna pull it up closer there we go that's a good shot so you can see the front and here I can even fold it so you can see what the front and what the back looks like. So thank you so, so much. And there's much, much more to come.